Joining us right now to weigh in on that is the former CEO of McDonald's USA and Famous Dave's and the chairman of Fat Brands International, Ed Renzi. Ed, good to see you. Uh, good to be here. Thanks for having What's me. Your reaction? Happy New Year. A happy New Year to you. What's your reaction to all of this? You, you look at this Indianapolis plant now. Well, I think that uh, uh, Vice President Pence and uh, Donald Trump worked very hard to keep Carrier in Indi Indiana, and I think they did a good job. Uh, it's too bad that it didn't happen two years before that because uh, they probably wouldn't have built the plant in Mexico given what Trump has done to our economy and the way he's driving things. You know, I listened to Jamie Dimon, who is a real expert on our economy, and uh, you got to believe in this 4% uh, growth opportunity. So I think carriers sticking around is a good thing. Uh, I think the move of the auto companies to Alabama talks a lot about the right to work states. You look at what's happening in Illinois where they're losing jobs like crazy people are moving out because of high taxes. What's going on in New York State with these high taxes? California, Washington with the minimum wage. There's a lot of craziness going on at the state level. Uh, the people better wake up to because they're destroying the economies at the state level, not the federal level. Yeah, a lot of craziness. That's one thing that Jamie Dimon addressed, especially when it comes to regulation. Listen to this. There is no question in my mind. The I'm not talking about banks now. The regulations was like a friction cost in society, and it got worse and worse and worse. So in other industries, if I speak to you know, some of my friends in, in, in media, mining, telecom, they're clearly seeing a benefit. We haven't really seen it yet in financial services because of the new people just put in place. But, but the American public should think of this as a vast bureaucracy, which is like sand in the engine. And to reduce some of that, not roll back good regulations, not go back to the good old times, not don't, you know, we need to protect consumers, but, you know, bureaucracy is bureaucracy. And the American public knows it when they go to the DMV. Veterans know it when they go to the VA. I mean, and that's what's been happening more and more in the United States. Are you more poised to use extra savings from the tax plan and this rollback in regulations to increase dividend, to buy back stock, to create new jobs, invest in the business? What are you most poised so, to do? So our dividend will consistently go up like it always has and be steady and secure and stuff like that. The primary thing that J.P. Morgan Chase is always to use your capital to grow. That is why we're here, and that's investing in communities, countries, going to new countries around the world, opening more branches here. So we've opened 20 commercial banking branches in the United States in the last five or ten years. In some ways, we've been inhibited. Regulators have wanted banks to, main, to hold their capital, so a lot of that capital is retained for regulatory purposes. It was not used for growth purposes, and some, for some of for legitimate reasons. But at one point, banks are going to use that to grow. In the short run, because you just can't turn growth on and off, some will do more buyback, you know, but, but under the right circumstances, over time, capital will be used to grow businesses. Does this eventually translate into jobs, do you think? Absolutely. So there you go. And, and Dagan, he's making a clear point. Any one of those is good for the economy. Buybacks as well. Eventually, though, it does connect the dots to jobs. It, it does. And what Jamie Dimon told you goes to the point of why is corporate tax reform so important to this country? And how does it help every single individual? Not on the individual side of tax reform, but on the corporate side. And you've seen it through, a, again, a rising stock market, but also those more than 130 companies. Companies stepping up and saying we're going to give our, our employees bonuses or give some of this money back. Listen, people always wondered why did the why didn't we have any wage growth for the most part during the Obama administration? The Obama administration came in and completely ripped up the entire health care industry, re-regulated it, Dodd Frank the entire financial industry. They regulated the internet with net neutrality. Those rules are gone, and they tried to put they nationalized student loans and then tried to put coal companies out of business. You think about the impact, and now it's an awakening mm -hmm. in terms of the power of business and what they can do for every worker. You know, it's going to be interesting to see because there was so much negative publicity about the tax reform where the majority of American people were not for it. All right. Well, Nancy Pelosi said it's Armageddon. And, and Ar Armageddon. The end of the world. <laughs> and by the way, celebrities, idiots all tweeting about the, the tax reform. I, I, I keep going back to this tweet from this celebrity who I won't name who said, everybody knows that it's going to hurt more people than it helps. Hashtag fact. Hashtag lie yeah, but is General what it is. General Keene's point is, will that change, right? I mean, yeah, in 2018, you know? I'm sorry. it's going to change. Capital comes home. The companies get more productive. Everybody's right. going to benefit from that. Wages do, if wages do go up, as we were talking about earlier, 
it's been interesting to see that yeah. those poll numbers start to shift. Because yeah, and I'd rather, see, benefit. I'd rather see wages go up, Ed Renzi, because of a better economy and inflation, rather than being forced to raise the minimum wage like 18 states just did. Well, it, it's, it's insane what's going on in Washington and California. I'll point at those particularly. Uh, the University of Washington did a study, and it says clearly job loss as a result of this in, exorbitant increase in minimum wage uh, is, is destroying jobs. And the reality of it is these are entry-level jobs for low-skilled workers. It's a pathway to productivity. And you look at what's going on in the country right now. In most states, there's an optimism that's unbridled. You look at pension funds right now, firemen, police officers, school teachers, uh, the average worker, their pension funds are, are growing like crazy. It gives them a sense of security that there's a future. These minimum wage bills are destroying small businesses. The, the I can CEO, show you example CEO, after example. The CEO of Jack in the Box said that he's considering swapping cashiers for robots. Following the rising Absolutely. labor costs. What? They did it in Home Depot. You don't need anybody to check you out at Home Depot. It's all robots. Well, Walmart's even talking about doing away with all their employees and everything's going to be done with a, a smart device. You know, I look at the restaurant industry as a small microcosm of what's going on in all minimum wage uh, employed small businesses. People are going to get eliminated because technology's cheaper over the long uh, road than what is minimum wage. We've confused what minimum wage is with a living wage. It's not a living wage, and these states better get their heads out of their patukas because they're not going to be successful doing this. No, Red Robin doing away with busboys because of the rising minimum wages. Uh, absolutely, which is tragic because Red Robin's a great company. They've got an opportunity to take a busboy and turn him into the CEO and five or 35 years with proper training, mentoring, and developing wow. and leadership, they're just going to get rid of them. Now, I started out at McDonald's making 85 cents an hour and got to the C-suite as the CEO of the North American company. I tell you, you can't do that in today's minimum wage world. It just isn't going to happen. You can't afford to bring in unskilled labor today. Wow. But, Ed, you I actually, you just hit on why the messaging from the Democrats has not worked and does not work because they advocate $15 minimum wage. That's their, their, their tent pole on reviving the economy. People don't want to make minimum wage. They want to run the company. They want to start their own business. It's that kind of optimism and opportunity that resonates with people, not telling them, hey, we're going to give you a $15 minimum wage as if that's the end all be all. Yeah. Right. So, well, we got too many people that aren't getting basic skills like carpentry and welding and things of that nature. Those are great jobs, and we ought to listen to Mike Rowe more when he talks about this kind of thing. Uh, so, you know, the states are making political decisions on a minimum wage. They are kowtowing to labor unions who index their contracts against the minimum wage and want to capture dues from all these fast food workers and car washes and everywhere else. It, it's 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 a game for votes more than anything else. So you so you started off making eighty five cents an hour, and then at McDonald's. Yeah, for pound for pound, I was a, a great deal because I weighed about two hundred and eighty pounds. So <laughs> it was a good deal for McDonald's. Well, and you and I want to quote out. I'm going to tweet out your quote. You said, "Get your head out of your patukas." <laughs> well, yeah. I'm, I'm Sorry, I realize this is television. Yeah, no, this is a family program. You said it. You said it well. Ed, it's good to see you, sir. Always a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Good day. Ed Renzi there. We'll